Think you know what lurks in the depths of the ocean? While nearly 95% of our oceans haven't been explored yet, it's hard not to let your imagination run wild. But thanks to brave explorers, deep sea cameras, and awesome archaeologists, we do know about some pretty incredible sea creatures living in our waters today and millions of years ago. From the 9-foot spider crab to the 60-foot prehistoric megalodon, these sea dwellers come in all shapes and sizes. But let's focus on sea creatures famous for their huge size. Can you guess which living species of whale is the largest? Well, it's not the orca, but that's a good guess. The orca is a toothed whale that can grow to anywhere from 23 feet to 32 feet, which is slightly smaller than a school bus. How about the narwhal? Nope, they're not the biggest either. These unicorns of the sea live mainly in Arctic waters and only grow 13 feet to 20 feet in length. And that's including their 9-foot tusk. Tired of guessing? Okay, I give in. The largest whale that still exists today is the blue whale. At a jaw-dropping 82 feet to 105 feet, the blue whale is not only the biggest whale we know of, but is currently the largest animal to have ever lived on Earth. Seriously. These animals are bigger than a T-Rex and even the prehistoric Megalodon. If you were to put a blue whale next to a school bus, it would look like it could swallow it. Think about that. According to National Geographic, a blue whale's tongue can weigh the same as an elephant. And their hearts can weigh as much as a car. That doesn't even sound possible. It's no wonder these giants need to eat about four tons of krill every day. While there aren't too many animals living today that can compete with the blue whale's epic proportions, there is an entirely different species that is a good contender. And it's not quite what you would expect. It's a jellyfish. No, I'm not talking about the little jellyfish that wash up on the shore and ruin a perfectly good day at the beach. I'm referring to the lion's mane jellyfish, the biggest jellyfish around. This invertebrate can grow up to 120 feet long. They also come in different gorgeous colors like red, purple, or even shades of orange. As if their length wasn't impressive, the lion's mane jellyfish boasts a whopping 8 sets of 70 to 150 tentacles. That means they can have up to 1,200 in total. And here's the giant oceanic manta ray, the largest type of ray in the world. Their wingspan can be longer than a bus. These guys can reach 30 feet in length. They also have the biggest brain compared to body size among all fish. Unlike their stingray cousins, mantas don't have venomous tails. And while the lion's mane jellyfish and the blue whale are yet to be beaten for the longest sea creature, there is one marine creature that can grow even larger in length. The Portuguese Physalia physalis, tentacles and all, can reach a length of 165 feet long. And that's according to mentalfloss.com. While this thing may look a lot like a jellyfish, it's actually known as a siphonophore, and there are hundreds and sometimes thousands of them that are genetically identical. Their long tentacles help the organism catch prey, and its sting is fatal to most animals, even humans in some cases. What's even creepier is that if one of the tentacles comes off the organism for whatever reason, it can float around the water for days before decomposing. Even if it's detached, this tentacle can still sting you. But don't go running out of the ocean just yet. Your chances of being hurt by a Portuguese Phasalia Phasalis sting are pretty slim. However, if you do get stung, the side effects aren't pretty, with welts, stomach cramps, an elevated heart rate, and an upset stomach. While you don't want to go anywhere near these long creatures, they sure are pretty to look at. Check out all those colors! The Shastasaurus is the biggest marine reptile that has ever existed. These predators lived during the late Triassic period, about 210 million years ago. These amazing giants could reach lengths of up to 69 feet and weighed more than 75 tons. This made the Shastasaurus as heavy as a blue whale. And if you could stand this creature up vertically, it'd be as tall as a seven-story building. Despite appearances, the Shastasaurus was actually pretty slim for its size. 
Its ribcage was only six feet across. You'd think that this big guy was chowing down on other dinosaurs, but that's not the case at all. This reptile survived on a diet that consisted of small fish and cephalopods, like octopuses and squids. The Alberto nectes is a bright representative of the pleosaur family, meaning that this marine reptile had a small head on an incredibly long neck and large flipper-like limbs that helped it move through the water. These creatures occupied the seas around North America 76 to 70 million years ago. The length of this sea monster could reach 38 feet, with its neck taking up 23 feet of that length. Its neck was a true record breaker. It had a whopping 76 bones in it. No other animal known to humankind has had so many vertebrae in its neck. Scientists aren't sure why they needed such a lengthy neck. They might have used it to collect shellfish off the seabed. Or perhaps it helped them capture their main prey, fish and squids. This aquatic reptile also had gastroliths in its stomachs. Some of them were as big as 5.5 inches in diameter. The Tylosaurus belonged to the Mosasaur family. It dominated the shallow seas of North America about 85 to 80 million years ago. This was an enormous predator, with the biggest representatives reaching 45 feet in length. It had a narrow hydrodynamic body with a blunt, powerful head that the animal used to ram and stun its prey. Its body was equipped with agile flippers and a long tail decorated with a maneuverable fin. The Tylosaurus was a carnivore, and its diet included not only fish, turtles, and small sharks, but also other mosasaurs, pleosaurs, and flightless birds. Meet Ophthalmosaurus. This prehistoric reptile thrived during the late Jurassic period and lived in oceans all over the world. Ophthalmosaurus weighed somewhere around 6,000 pounds and grew to approximately 16 feet long, according to NewDinosaurs.com. That's about the same length as the beluga whale that exists today. It's too bad these guys went extinct before we had a chance to see them ourselves, as their cartoonish wide eyes and dolphin-like features are pretty darn cute. Of course, the ophthalmosaurus evolved over time to become ophthalmologists, or eye doctors that we know today. No, that's just a lie. Just testing you. The Mosasaurus is a truly gigantic predator that dominated the seas all over the world about 66 million years ago. According to fossil evidence, some specimens could be more than 50 feet in length. This fact makes the Mosasaurus the biggest marine carnivore of its time. One of the most terrifying things about this creature was its crocodile-like head, decorated with literally hundreds of razor-sharp teeth neatly organized in two rows on both jaws. The thing is that it was pretty challenging for the Mosasaurus to grab its prey in the water. That's why it had all these teeth, plus something special. Pterygoid teeth anchored to the bones on the roof of its mouth. This made hunting and holding onto its prey much easier. The Styxosaurus belonged to the Pleosaur family and lived during the late Cretaceous period, around 85 to 70 million years ago. Upon first glance at this dinosaur, you might mistake it for a sea snake, and it'd be an honest mistake. Styxosauruses were about 35 feet in length, but over 16 feet of that consisted just of their long snake-like neck. They had a comparatively small body and weighed approximately four tons. Their mouths were full of razor-sharp cone-shaped teeth that they used to catch fish. They didn't need to chew their prey, thanks to the 200 small stones called gastroliths in their bellies that probably aided in digestion. At the same time, some scientists believe that the Styxosaurus used these stones to sink to the ocean bottom in search of particular types of fish. Huh, looks kind of like Nessie to me. The deeper you go, the creepier they get. You're about to travel to the darkest ocean depths and check whether this claim is true. Are the creatures living there as scary as people think? You go 120 feet down underwater. Pay close attention to the bottom under your flippers. Oh my, what's that terrifying face half hidden in the sand? That's the Northern Stargazer. You can meet this fish in the eastern United States. It buries itself in the sand until unsuspecting prey gets near. 
Then, the nightmarish creature electrically shocks the poor animal and dines on it. You are moving deeper, to 240 feet under the surface. That's where you spot a colorful, puffy creature, no more than one foot long. It's the sarcastic fringe head. At first, the fish seems to be harmless. Ha! Ah, only unless it's provoked. When this animal is agitated, it opens its huge, huge mouth to fend off predators. This defense tactic is a sight to behold, both surprising and frightening. Luckily, the fish is no threat to people whatsoever. The creature you see next can comfortably live in shallow waters, but you meet it at a depth of 900 feet. You don't even need to wonder why the animal's called the Game of Thrones Brittle Star. Unlike starfish that slowly crawl across the seabed, this creature moves fast. It wriggles its long, flexible arms to get from point A to point B. Its body is protected by a hard calcium carbonate shell. Also called snake stars, these creatures are tiny and easily fit in nooks, cracks, and small crevices in rocks. At a much greater depth of 2,000 feet, you come across the giant squid. For a long time, it was thought to be a creature from legends rather than a real animal. The giant squid was first caught on camera in 2001, and it's exactly as big as its name implies. The creature's eyeballs are the size of soccer balls, and the squid itself can weigh up to 600 pounds. Almost 3,000 feet below the surface, you get spooked by another creepy-looking animal. It's somewhat red and rather small, no longer than one foot long. As you approach the creature, it looks rather docile, or maybe just indifferent. The vampire squid, that's the animal's name, looks like an umbrella with tentacles. It doesn't even produce ink, so you leave it alone. Soon after that, at a depth of 3,200 feet, you meet the cookie cutter shark. This creature is a parasite. It attaches itself to big fishes, dolphins, whales, and sometimes even people. Then, using its neatly arranged serrated teeth, it gouges out cookie-sized pieces of meat. This nasty glowing animal doesn't grow larger than 20 inches and lives in the ocean twilight zone. At a depth of 3,300 feet, the light becomes a rare and valuable thing. The animals living that far away from the surface have to evolve unusual features to survive. That's how the barrel eye fish ended up with a transparent head and two super sensitive barrel shaped eyes. Right now, pretty much like always, they're pointed upward, allowing the fish to see potential prey and you. Almost 4,000 feet below the surface, you see something droopy and saggy. The blobfish doesn't have a skeleton or any muscle. Its jelly-like flesh lets the creature survive incredible water pressure. Despite its appearance, the blobfish is an ambush predator. It usually lies very still on the bottom, waiting for unsuspecting prey to swim by. You go a bit deeper and spot a creature that looks particularly ghastly. The goblin shark senses prey with its snout. The creature's terrifying jaws are attached to elastic ligaments. When some animal comes too close, the shark catapults its mouth forward to catch it. If your mouth could do the same, you would be able to eat things dangling seven inches away from your face. Even deeper than that, at 5,000 feet, you notice another member of the shark family. The frilled shark looks like an overgrown eel, but its gills are lined with red fringe at the edges, hence the name. The creature's horrifying mouth has 25 rows of razor-sharp backward-facing teeth, 300 in total. The shark prefers to hover in the water, waiting for its prey to come closer. Then, it charges at it like a snake. Suddenly, you see something glow brightly like an electric bulb. But after coming closer, you recoil in horror. The creature looks like an upgraded eel equipped with oversized teeth. That's the deep sea dragonfish that can live at a depth of 6,000 feet. Chemical processes going on inside the fish's body produce an eerie red glow. This glow is used to communicate with other fish. At the same depth, you meet another deep sea inhabitant. Its most prominent feature is its huge mouth. Thanks to it, the gulper eel can swallow its prey whole. 
its stomach can expand to a terrifying size when it needs to fit something large. At a depth of 6,600 feet, you come across an angry-looking creature with a fishing rod over its head. It's the deep-sea anglerfish. The animal has an unusual dorsal spine, even though it's worn only by females. It protrudes above their mouth and has a lure on its tip, some luminous flesh that baits prey. The anglerfish has such a big mouth and its body is so pliable that it can swallow animals twice its own size. You're 7,000 feet down when you see another fish that's glowing in the dark. The black dragonfish is a sly creature. It has its light-producing organs arranged along its belly. The spooky creature also has gleaming flashlights next to its eyes. They help the animal find prey and attract potential mates. At the same depth, you also spot an enormous pill bug. But unlike the critter you can find in your garden, this one is at least 20 inches long. That's the giant isopod, and it is, indeed, related to the roly-poly, as well as crabs and shrimps. These creatures may look somewhat scary, but they're harmless. They feast on other deep-sea animals only after those have passed away. At a depth of 13,000 feet, you notice the ocean floor has become a bit… fluffy? That's because it's covered with zombie worms. These creatures rarely grow to be more than two inches long. And still, they can break down fairly large animals, so strong the acid they produce is. The worm's feathery appearance makes them look like plants. But the truth is, these creatures munch on rock-hard bones of the world's largest animals, such as whales. The grid-eye fish almost scares you out of your mind soon after that. This creature has a pair of large greenish oval plates on the top of its head and no eyes whatsoever. Experts believe that these bony membranes detect light coming from predators, saving the fish's life. You're now three miles down below the surface, and that's where you spot something bizarre on the bottom. It's definitely a fish, but it's standing on the ocean floor on three long, rigid legs. Ah, it's the tripod fish. Curious rather than scary. This creature has adapted to the almost complete darkness by giving up on its vision. It has to rely on vibration and touch to sense prey. And then, the fish uses its fins as hands to transport food directly into its mouth. You don't have time to go any deeper before you spot the faceless fish. This slightly off-putting creature has no eyes, and its mouth, smiling a Mona Lisa smile, is underneath its body. For the first time, the faceless cusk, which is the creature's official name, was seen more than a century ago. The next time it happened was only in 2017. Once you've reached a depth of six miles below the surface, you see deep sea cucumbers. These bizarre creatures are much bigger than their shallow water relatives. They spend most of their time on the sea floor. But if they need to escape predators, they are able to swim away. Deep sea cucumbers have bright purplish coloring, tiny feet, and tentacles that surround their mouths. Hmm, cute. The question is, why do these deep sea creatures look so scary? Life is very different there, at the bottom. Tremendous water pressure, a lack of food, and constant darkness. You have to adapt to survive in such extreme conditions. It looks like a prehistoric creature that came from the time of dinosaurs. This scary beast is called the basking shark. It can grow up to 39 feet. People have only reported three of them in the past 160 years. The last sighting was in 2015, and before that, about 80 years ago. These sharks sometimes rise to the surface to filter out small animals, such as shrimps and other small crustaceans, when they want to have a nice, tasty seafood dinner. But when there isn't enough grub at the surface, they go down to the depths of almost 3,300 feet where they tend to stay for months, which is something researchers discovered using satellite tags. Tag, you're it! Now, basking sharks like to spend their time in more temperate waters, but they can migrate long distances. They live across the globe, but in warm tropical or subtropical areas, they won't go near the surface because they're not fans of high temperatures. The lion's mane jellyfish is not that rare, but it's fascinating how large it is. It's the biggest among jellyfish species and the longest animal. Its total length can reach 120 feet. 
that's approximately 23 feet more than the longest blue whale scientists know about. The jellyfish has around 70 to 150 tentacles, and they all contain huge amounts of neurotoxins that can seriously harm you if you come in contact with the animal. But people don't usually come across this type of jellyfish because it rarely lives near the coast, preferring the open ocean. Generally, you can find the lion's mane jellyfish no deeper than 65 feet below the surface, where it dines on small fishes, zooplankton, and some other types of jellyfish. It uses its tentacles to catch its value meal. Hey, you want fries with that? The giant phantom jelly comes out of the darkness and depths of the ocean's midnight zone. Its sunhat-shaped bell reaches over 3 feet across. This bell trails four ribbon-like mouth arms that can be up to 33 feet long. This quite rare creature uses its mouth arms to catch unfortunate animals swimming around and not knowing what's coming for them. Giant phantom jelly propels itself through the water with periodic pulses coming from its orange head. It glows faintly and mysteriously in the pitch-black depths. It lives across the globe in all the oceans, except for the Arctic. I'm guessing it's too cold. Because of its odd shape, people often call the oar fish the dragonfish or sea serpent. It's about 26 feet long, which makes it the longest bony fish we know about, and lives at depths of 3,300 feet. Oar fish spend most of their time in the deep, dark parts of the open ocean in tropical and subtropical areas. They almost never come to the surface, unless, you know, invited. It's a ribbon-shaped and shiny silver creature with a long red dorsal fin and red or like pelvic fins. Its body has no scales and is very thin. The fish can grow to a length of about 30 feet and weigh 660 pounds. Oarfish have really big eyes that help them see better in their dark, scary surroundings. The frilled shark is definitely one of the gnarliest-looking marine animals out there. If you saw it somewhere, you'd probably think you went back to the age of dinosaurs. Yup, the frilled shark is a prehistoric creature because its roots go back 80 million years. This living fossil can grow to be 7 feet long. It got its name from its frilly gills. Even though frilled sharks have the shark part in their name, they swim similar to an eel in a distinctly serpentine way. Its mouth is terrifying. Similar to the maw of the great white shark, it has 300 trident-shaped teeth lined in 25 rows. Hey, come a little closer, huh? Researchers discovered this creature in the 19th century. But people rarely see it. And no wonder. It usually lives at depths of between 390 and 4,200 feet. Most of the time, the frilled shark feeds on squid, swallowing them whole. Its long jaws allowed the frill shark to gape extra wide and swallow animals half as long as its entire body. Goblin sharks are very rare. Researchers have spotted fewer than 50 of them in more than 120 years. But maybe that's for the best, since we're talking about a pretty scary fella with a narrow snout and sharp teeth. It's also capable of thrusting its entire jaw outward when it wants to catch something. Hmm, sounds familiar. As it's lurking through the dark depths of the ocean, a goblin shark sees a small squid that looks quite yummy. The dangerous animal inches toward the squid. When the poor creature notices the predator, it tries to dart away. But it's too late. The shark has already thrust its jaw the whole three inches out of its mouth. This jaw is connected to the flaps of skin the shark can unfold. This helps a lot because the goblin shark is a sluggish animal, so it's pretty hard for it to chase its food. After finishing its lunch, the goblin shark puts its jaw back in its mouth and swims away as if nothing's happened. Goblin sharks mostly live at the bottom of the ocean. Like many other shark species, they prefer swimming alone. Here's a silver-colored creature with very rough skin. That's the ocean sunfish, with a total length of almost 11 feet. Its other name is Mola. The ocean sunfish is the heaviest of all bony fish out there. People sometimes call it a swimming head because of its bizarre appearance. These creatures have such a weird shape because they're born with a back fin that never actually grows. It just folds into itself as the animal matures and creates a rounded rudder. The sunfish is a bit clumsy. It moves with the help of its mighty fins that allow the animal to swim on its side. This marine inhabitant is a solitary creature. 
It mostly feeds on zooplankton and jellyfish. The spotted wobegong is one of the world's rarest sharks. It grows to be more than 10 feet long. It may not look as terrifying as some of its shark relatives, but it's pretty good at catching unsuspecting animals swimming past, mostly during the night. The animal has a spiracle, which is why it can breathe while staying still at the bottom of the ocean. It's motionless most of the time, which is why you can barely notice it. Its flat body and large pelvic and pectoral fins blend in with the underwater terrain. That's why they're so good at hiding. This ability helps when these sharks want to protect themselves, too. Wobegong means carpet shark. They usually live close to the ocean floor in coral reefs, on sandy bottoms, and under piers. People have even spotted the shark in the water that is barely deep enough to cover its flattened body. Now, blobfish lack teeth and bones, so they can't actively hunt. Since they don't have much muscle mass, they can barely move around. Hey, I had a roommate like that once. They get their energy from animals they scoop up from the seafloor. They also know how to conserve this energy. That's how it usually goes with deep-sea creatures. They don't have as much food as those animals that swim closer to the surface. Instead, they have special body mechanisms that allow them to save energy for the times when they don't have much to eat. Pressure at the depths where the blobfish lives is 120 times as high as that at the surface. That's why the bizarre creature looks like a weird gelatinous mass only when you bring it up to the surface. The pressure here is not strong enough to keep its body together. Hey, breaking up is hard to do. The white margin stargazer could compete with the blobfish for the title of the ugliest animal in the sea, don't you think? Now, this animal has eyes on the top of its head, together with an upward-facing mouth which the creature uses to hide itself in the sand. That's where it spends most of its time, with only its eyes protruding from the sand. It chills this way until some small animal passes by. It can lunge at its target incredibly quickly, literally within milliseconds. This creates a vacuum in the water that pulls in a crab, fish, or some other small, unfortunate animal. Another tactic involves venom. This fish has a venomous spine in its shoulder blade that helps with catching other animals and defending itself against enemies. Even though it's not related to the electric eel, the white margin stargazer can generate an electric shock as powerful as 50 volts. Ow! Hey, let's take a deep dive into ocean waters to see which of these creepy-looking animals are our friends. We're swimming in the tropical waters of Nanina Balava Island near Fiji. Can you see those giant creatures the size of a Volkswagen Beetle? Those are manta rays. They've got a long whip-like tail and large flat diamond bodies. There are two species of manta rays, the reef manta ray and the giant manta ray. They belong to the same family as sharks, but they only have small teeth in their lower jaw. They feed on zooplankton, tiny fish, and crustaceans. Manta rays are social animals, and they like people. Once you let them come close to you, they'll swim around you to observe you. Don't chase them, though, because they're super fast swimmers. Their name translates to cloak or blanket, and out of all sea creatures, they've got the largest brain compared to body weight ratio. These fellas can recognize themselves in a mirror. The Asian sheep's head wrasse follows. Even if it seems unsightly, it's one of the friendliest fish you'll come across in the shallow waters of Japan, China, and Korea. It has protrusions on both its jaw and head. It likes to hide in its anemone, and it's usually scared to go out even at 40 inches long. One of these fellows developed a friendship with a Japanese scuba diver 30 years ago. When the diver found the fish, it was injured, and he helped it recover. The diver had been the caretaker of an underwater Shinto shrine. He calls the fish by hitting the underwater bell. Time to go swimming with the largest fish in the world, the whale shark. Though these creatures are sharks, they have a lot in common with whales. They can live for 100 years, though they've got tiny brains. They're indifferent to humans. These fellows don't care about anything they can't eat. And unlike other shark species, they won't bite you. Whale sharks are filter feeders. They do have teeth, 3,000 of them, but they don't use them. They've got a massive mouth, like me. But their throat is only the size of a quarter. Next, we have the sunfish. 
a fish without a tail that looks like it's been cut in half. It has large fins, and when you see it breaching on the surface, you'll think a shark is approaching. The sunfish dives deep in the water to let other fish exfoliate his skin and remove parasites. Once they're done, it returns to the surface to sunbathe. It's also a voracious eater. If it sees you in the waters, it'll likely approach you and observe you. Within a day, you'll be able to feed it from the palm of your hand. Time for the animal that looks like it's always smiling, the bottlenose dolphin. It's one of the most social sea creatures, and it travels in groups. It enjoys playing, hunting, raising calves, and helping out its community. Bottlenose dolphins are excellent swimmers, with speeds reaching 19 miles per hour. They usually come up to the surface to breathe air through the blowhole on their head. These creatures are great communicators, and they send messages to each other. They use echolocation to navigate and find food. When they spot people, they become very friendly, so much that they let their guard down, and it makes them vulnerable to other sea creatures such as sharks. Heading to the Pacific coast, we'll come across some gray whales. Their skin is covered with parasites and other organisms that make their snouts look like rough pieces of rock. We gotta get on their nice side first. Gray whales can attack a large boat, a ship, or a vessel if they sense their calves are in danger. But generally, they're friendly and appear unbothered by rowing kayakers. In some cases, they'll approach small boats and allow humans to touch them, though you're required by law to keep your distance. If it wants to get closer, it will. If it feels threatened, it will act aggressively. Now, let me show you a fish with a tool on its head, the hammerhead shark. Their skull helps them with hunting. Their eyes are placed on the hammer's outer edges and gives them a 360-degree vertical view. But they've got a blind spot in front of their nose. Their heads are like metal detectors. Most of what they want is below the sand surface. So they lightly dip their heads in the sand and sweep up whatever is under there. You'll see them in temperate and tropical waters, both near the shorelines and offshore. They usually move in groups. They're mostly harmless to humans and divers, but there have been a few occasions where they got aggressive. But before they do, they'll give you a bunch of warning signs, and divers know how to handle them. Now, I'll show you something kind of smaller, the sea lion. These creatures are a bit tricky. They're playful, aggressive, arrogant, smart, and above all, curious. Sea lions can't breathe underwater, but they can dive almost a thousand feet deep, and they can hold their breath for a long time. They take in air through their nose, and once they dip their heads in the waters, their nostrils slam shut. If they spot humans at the beach, they'll stay away and wait for them to leave. Wild sea lions aren't the friendliest to anyone, especially if they feel threatened. The approachable ones have been trained in captivity. Beluga whales are next. They're white with bulgy heads, and they're amongst the most social and loudest you'll ever meet. Their upwards-facing mouths make them look like they're smiling. When beluga whales are born, they're a dark gray shade. It takes 8 years for their skin to turn white. They can change the shape of their heads by blowing air around their sinuses. Beluga whales love humans. Once they make human friends, they don't want to leave. Even though they're wild animals, they become too entrusting with people. Marine biologists suggest staying away for their safety. Have you heard of sea cows? Those are actually called manatees. You'll see some in rivers and others in the ocean. Even though they're large, they usually stay in shallow coastal areas, munching on seagrass, leaves, and algae. Manatees bring their heads to the surface every four minutes or so to breathe, but they can hold their breath longer than that. They're slow travelers, and even if they aren't as smart as dolphins, they can understand colors. These fellas are gentle giants, and they like to approach humans searching for warmth. Next, we've got the basking shark, the second largest shark in the world. Their mouth is their most impressive feature, like me, since it can open more than 3 feet wide. Okay, you win. These creatures have an intimidating appearance. But despite their size, they're harmless to humans, and divers swim with them. They're very social and can form schools of 100 individuals. They swim near the water surface, filter feeding on plankton. They too have a bunch of teeth that they don't use. 
Do you know which creature can sing loud songs for 30 minutes? I know, Barry Manatee. Hmm, that might be before your time. (laughs) Actually, it's the humpback whale. Scientists aren't sure why they make those low howls and noises. They might be trying to communicate with others to attract mates. You'll see them near coastlines, feeding on tiny food. And they use their flukes to propel through the water. Humpback whales are less friendly than gray whales because they're very cautious. But they're the heroes of the ocean. They try to save other animals from orcas. And experts say they're capable of decision-making and problem-solving. On one occasion, a humpback whale jumped in to save a whale biologist from a tiger shark. Now, let's try to spot the expert in disguise, the Caribbean Reef octopus. The specialized color cells help it blend in with the sand and ocean rock's rough texture. But Caribbean reef octopuses are loners, and they like to get around on their own. This creature is also teeny tiny. It can grow almost 5 inches and, with their legs, getting as long as the average person's foot. If you get too close to them, they'll likely turn blue and warn you that they feel threatened. Even though they're trusting, it's better to keep your distance to keep them calm. A weird-looking creature walks around like a living vacuum cleaner down in the ocean's pitch-black depths. I'm talking about sea pigs. They got their name from their pinkish bodies, and they fit in the palm of your hand. These creatures don't swim. They walk around on the seafloor. Their legs consist of 5 to 7 pairs of enlarged tube feet, and they have tentacles around their mouths to fiddle through the mud to find scum to munch on. Yumbo! Since they're vulnerable, they have poisonous skin for protection against other sea creatures. If you encounter one, it'll be quite friendly. But if you want to keep it as a pet, you'll need a very deep tank. Speaking of slimy water creatures, let's talk about comb jellies. They're friendly animals that like to swim close to the shore on warm summer evenings. There are two types of comb jellies, some with two tentacles and some without any. You can spot them at night since they glow in the dark and light up the waters. One of them is the sea gooseberry. On the sand, it looks like a transparent blob of jello, and it can fit into a teaspoon. Unlike jellyfish, comb jellies don't stink because they don't have stinging cells, and they're safe to swim with.